Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Like last week, if you watched last week's video, you understand what all of this mean, okay? So I told y'all it's going to be a talk show over food and fashion because that's what we like over here, right? Yep. And today's conversation is going to involve my good friend, Ariana. I Yay. call her Grande though, so you're going to hear a lot of, me, a lot of times I'm saying Grande. Yep, Grande has been my name for... Well, we've been friends for a while. Yeah, probably since it was 2016. Yeah, that's like six, seven, going on seven years. Six, seven years, yeah. 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 Remember how we first met? Do you want to tell the story of how we first met? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to tell the story of how you first I'm met? I, I remember it. I sure do. I could tell the story if you want me to. Go ahead. Okay, so we go to Brooklyn Tabernacle, and we had an outreach um, for Thanksgiving, right? I must say it was turkey, yeah. Tur we was giving out turkeys and food to the homeless, and I see this short girl walk into the um, room that we were in, because it was a lot of us, and she had these high heels on, okay? <laughs> and I'm like, we're giving out turkeys, we're giving out food, this girl... Wait, pause, pause. Because I didn't come to give out a turkey. Uh -oh. I came to support a friend, okay? I wanted to go home, and she asked me to come with her. Hey, Kamari. She wanted me to come with her. So I went to go support her, because I'm like, I'm cold. I'm going to go home. I didn't sign up for the turkey situation. All right? I had to did my job I didn't with know the that. Christmas okay. play. I did mm -hmm. my part serving. So I was just like, that turkey, it was not me, right? No, it's not Christmas. I think it was Thanksgiving we It was giving. Thanksgiving, but I was I, already going to yeah. do the Christmas play. So I, my was, serving yeah. was going to happen there. That's why okay. I came in high heels, because she was doing it. You know, I didn't know that part of the story. All I saw was this girl coming into the room with these high heels on, dressed to the nine. And I'm like, who is this girl? Like, does she not know we're about to give out food? Like, we're doing labor, like hard work. And so I hear her speak for the first time, and I'm like, oh, she's spicy. Like, this one. <laughs> no, because I didn't know what happened was. I was telling her, right, I was, she, mm -hmm. I was like, what time is this over? You know, because I'm like, I wasn't, I didn't wasn't plan to, to, and she's like, oh, serve, I don't yeah. know. And I was just like, well, can you find out? Like, I was like, I mean, I, I came a long way. I calmed down. I was very like, yo, find out. I need to know. Yeah. Da, da, da. And she turns around. I'm What's like, your name? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> like who she's is? She's like, I like you. Let's be friends. Yeah, like, literally. Like, I'm like, who is she? I need to be friends <laughs> with her because she's like, dressed to the nine she's like straightforward i'm like oh i could use a burden <laughs> i could use a burden in my life and i was like, I'm like she's serious but and i was serious i was serious i was like we gotta be friends and then from that day on we've been friends okay and she i mean from that day so now you have changed a, a well you've softened up a lot yeah, um but you're still very honest but i think you're more like I should get quoted for those who need to be sugar Yeah, coated. you're you're more like, hmm. Before, I don't think we we had filtered back in the day. No, no. We used to just say it, I left in the room, my mother. I never came out with a filter. Yeah. Did not have it. Sometimes, I remember Johnson used to be like, Erda, I'm just like, that was harsh. She's like, yes. So those who yeah. have offended in the past, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> we Sorry. gave a long way to that. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Oh, God. But before but yeah. we get in, that was an introduction. <laughs> but before we get in, um, so we cook today because Grandi loves breakfast. That's my thing. She's a breakfast girl. I could eat breakfast all day. Yeah, I don't know how she does it. I'm a dinner girl, okay? But she's a breakfast girl, so we made pancakes like with some. And it smells chicken. good too. Thanks, it was some fried chicken. And um, I like chicken thighs. I love chicken thighs. Yeah, it's more like juicy. Yeah. Yeah. Jumpsuits are cool, but I love chicken and thighs. And it has more meat, yeah. Yeah, I'm just like. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people realize how great chicken thighs are. Actually, let me stop talking good. before y'all start selling it out and prices go up. Smells good, too. But mm. so we got chicken thighs, pancakes, and bacon. Do you bake your bacon or do you fry I it? I fry it. You try it? baking it. Yeah. Yeah, it's different. I'm a It's not as oily. Oh, uh, okay. And you can still I can get see the same that. crunch, but it's it's really good. It's really good. I yeah. could try. I'm gonna try baking it. So I baked it. You always have like a healthy version, right? Pack to I'm not always. Yeah. And then grande like orange juice. I, mm -hmm. I'm sometimes it depends. I gotta be in the mood. So I she like got orange juice. juice. Yeah. I had grapefruits and I just blended it up and I got grapefruit and maple syrup, guys. That is a better version. Better version. Okay. Than your regular. 
It's not you know sure. Your it's average. It's from a straight tree that God created. <laughs> I told you, you and your healthy. That's good. We eating good. We eating good, all right? Yeah. So, I'm going to take it back. Can we? Yeah. yeah and, of course, fancy table and, you know, you always go all out with this. Because I've been talking, like, yeah, my friends, we, we going to have to have. Let me try this. I want us to have the experience because the maple way. Maple syrup from the tree. <laughs> from where does maple come from from maple these tree. okay there we go <laughs> i'm like i'm so used to what was that lady Aunt that, Jemima, they yeah her they name. changed her why she went from Aunt Jemima I, to like, Aunt we, Jane? I don't even know some i don't know well black people was there. complaining because of Aunt Jemima ain't no more it was her and uncle ben's oh right oh, they okay. were like i don't correct me if i'm wrong either they were or I the think they were. Was stolen from, I don't know. I don't know either. But you know, America. But this, this ain't your average on Jemima. No, we not on Jemima over here. It's nice and fluffy. You know and it has a crunch to it. You know the secret to making really good pancakes that comes out like almost perfect? Mm, this is good. When you put on, you gotta wait for it to bubble. When you see mm. all the bubbles, that's when mm -hmm. you flip it. I got that tip from somebody that used to work at IHOP. That's, that's a good. Tip. That's a good tip. Mm -hmm. This tastes like um, almost as good as Cafe Lulu's. Ooh! I don't know if you if you know your viewers know. If you're not, if you're if you're in New York but, or if you visit okay. New York, there's a um cafe called Cafe Lulu. It's so Lulu, good. Which I don't know how to say. I think it's Lulu. I don't know. But it's so, oh my God. if you want some crunchy, fluffy pancakes, so good. So good. It's in downtown Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. really, really good. I do like the maple syrup. It's good. See? I'm gonna have to it's buy not that. like you're missing out that much. It's less sticky yeah. than the regular really syrup. Good. And it's a healthier version. I'm just saying. Now, I feel like sometimes too, people think like healthy eating or healthy alternatives is like horrible, but yeah. sometimes it's better. Or sometimes it's closer, it tastes closer to, to what you're used to. And sometimes you just have to uh, adjust your palate to like healthy food and yeah. like, but you also have to know how to make it taste good. Like with, with the spices and the right, you know, blend. But one thing I realized though, I was just talking to my coworker about this, I think two days ago. If you do get quality, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. You went to Costco, right? Mm -hmm. And I bought lamb from Costco. As soon as Damon took a bite of that, you know, look at this crunch. I didn't crunch like that, but I had a crunch. As soon as Damon took a bite of that, um... Yeah, I do. And this is baked, wow. Mm -hmm. As soon as he took a bite of that lamb, he was like, where do you get the lamb from? Mm. And I'm just like, what do you mean? He said, this lamb tastes different. Mm -hmm. I was like... I got from Costco. So I could tell it tastes like meatloaf. Uh, There's barely, <laughs> it, was Not barely meatloaf. <laughs> it was barely any taste to it. Because uh -uh. even when I was eating, it was just like this little foofy. Just, mm, just, the texture was off. The texture was off. It was just mm. bland. And, and, but then when you get grass fed meat, you could taste the difference. So sometimes you'll need all that extra seasoning. If it's like quality. Mm hmm. Like what you're saying. Mm hmm. So, Makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, how was your week though? My week was busy. Um, I'm still trying to um, prioritize my workload so that I'm doing work at work and not doing work at home. Um, because last year was crazy. I was doing work outside of work hours and mm -hmm. it was draining me. Um, so this year I'm committing myself to finishing all paperwork of the week on mm -hmm. Friday. Like by Friday, mm -hmm. everything's written up, done, submitted. Right. And so it's going good so far. I mean, we're we're in the second week of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going good so far, but it just means that I'm, I realize I could be, I haven't been as productive as I need to be at my job. Like mm -hmm. if you're working like nine to five, I could be doing more with right. my time, getting things done, mm -hmm. than what I was doing. So mm -hmm. now I'm like, now I'm feeling that I'm working for my money. 
<laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, okay, I'm really trying to finish work mm -hmm. at work, work. So I'm actually working for my money. And I'm like, ooh, this is what work feels like. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I've been. What do you think distracted you or kept you from completing your work at work? I think, um, honestly, uh, of like failing to plan ahead mm -hmm. um, and really overthinking simple tasks. Mm -hmm. For me, I have a lot of paperwork, so mm -hmm. I write a lot of notes. And so I would be spending too much time on notes mm -hmm. because I'm thinking of every little detail that I think should go in a note. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, no, just just sit down and write what happened and stop revising like you know i would change it yeah, up no. and edit it and do all the stuff yeah. <laughs> and so now i'm like i have a good grasp of like i write what happens in the session on my notepad and then i literally have just write what's on my notepad into the note and just obviously like formulate it into mm -hmm. senses and so it helps me a lot with my time management mm. because before i would just write the note outside of the session like what i remember mm -hmm. and this time i'm actually writing it while i'm in the session with that the makes sense. i always second i always overthink for some reason mm -hmm. when i'm writing in general mm -hmm. and joseph joseph my husband he will tell you like when i do emails for him he's like okay i know you're gonna send this i know you're gonna send me like three revisions <laughs> So I'm going to wait until you read mm -hmm. it and then revise it and read it. Like after the third one, he's like, okay, I know this is the end mm -hmm. of this is the best one that you yeah. come up with. I'm going to send it. So he just waits. And that's kind of how I am. Why do you think you do that? I don't, I think it's a, like a perfection slash mm -hmm. just me thinking like, do, do they need, like, I don't know, like maybe I could add more to this. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, this little detail, is this little detail needed? Probably not, but let me just add, like, you know, I just overthink, like, what is important and what could be taken out. Mm -hmm. And I think um, school, too, like, school, it wires you to be very critical mm -hmm. about the, the, what you put out. And so I know, like for me, I love English, mm -hmm. but I remember yeah, I, I like write, like I like I love writing. Really? But I remember I I started to hate it when yeah. I started to get like a lot of feedback on like, oh, this doesn't sound right. This does do this different. This like I took rhetorical writing in college, and that's actually in my minor, and I loved it until I kept getting a lot okay. of criticism about my writing. And then so now I'm like, I was like oh. overly critical. Like, okay, does this sound right? Is this good? Is this what she's looking for? Is it like, you know, and so I got that A that I was like hoping to get, but it took, it was, it was a blow to my self-esteem because I used to love it. And then I started to hate it. Yeah. it. It took the fun out of it. It took everything out. Like it just. So when know. I asked you that question, what do you think caused that? I was going to say confident, but I want you to talk, but I'm glad you got to a point. Cause I'm like, yeah, usually it's, Somebody ruined it for you. Yeah. So do you think that you overthinking and being very critical stems from your lack of confidence due to what you the teach teacher? Your... Yeah, I think it was in college because all high school, I was a great writer. Mm -hmm. Always got compliments about my writing. And so I was like, I definitely want to do writing as a, mm -hmm. as a minor. And then when I did as a minor, because as a minor, is everything is very like tedious mm -hmm. and... To the book and whatever it took like the creativity out of it it's the no fun. fun and yeah me getting those marks on like the low grades on my papers i'm like oh my god i've never gotten a low grade before for yeah. writing like that's my strength yeah. and so i had to like continue you know you can't just drop the class you have to keep going you Leave know <laughs> Okay, you're, you're I like, drop a couple of classes. I, <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna get this A, you know. I'm, see, so you determination, me. You pissing me. I'm out. <laughs> I'm like, what is what is wrong with this paper mm -hmm. now? Yeah. So I just kept going and trying. Like I would go to her office hours and we would just look through the paper because I'm like, I used to love writing and then it's like, you know yeah. what? My mother, because mother when she was in school, she was in college. She used to struggle with English a lot. And one yeah. thing that she said that makes so much sense, and I'm an English teacher, mm -hmm. is math is universal. No mm -hmm. matter where you go, That's two true. plus two is always going to be four. Yeah. 
It's not gonna be oh in Russia it's three or in Ukraine it's okay. Let me not do those two together. In Russia it's oh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's yeah, that's yeah, that's in Russia it's four. In Ghana it's two. no, no, no. It's always yeah. going to be four. Point blank. Period. However, yeah. English is subjective, right? Mm, English okay. is you read you. There's a certain there's a reason why certain people like certain um some people like certain authors and some people don't like others because mm-hmm. of their style of writing. Yeah. And I've experienced this in college, and that's why I think I I, I learned that and I realized that in college. That's why I didn't I didn't really care that much to drop a class because I'm mm-hmm. like, it's not that I didn't do the task or complete it. I gave my first paragraph, I gave my mm-hmm. I gave my detail, I gave my evidence, whatever. Yeah. It's not that I didn't do that. You just don't like my style. You can't grade mm-hmm. grade me on style. Gotcha. Yeah. You cannot grade me, unless we're doing no. a specific. Let's say we're doing drama and we're doing a certain type of play, and right. this is the style that we're following. I don't follow that style. That's different. But if it's yeah. a free writing for informational writing or any type of writing mm-hmm. you can't grade me on my style because you don't like how yeah, i wrote right, it because yeah. my style is not your style you get what i'm saying yeah. you need to just grade me that, on yeah. okay did this person have a claim did mm-hmm. this person have clear evidence yeah. did they support it with relevant details or whatever mm-hmm. yes did they have a conclusion did they su- that's what needs to be me, yeah but don't tell me oh you got like even when i grade my students now yes yeah, some kids also, i don't like your, your style of writing however yeah. This this was the task. We, we and you complete, so oh, therefore, if yeah. you got ninety, you got ninety. The style have nothing yeah. to do with anything. Like your personal preferences has nothing to do with no. it. No, yeah. You know because for yeah. instance, I know that let's let's go into read on um, reading novels or whatever. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I I do not like self help books. I okay. don't. I don't. Yeah, like it. and I, I love self help books. She loves it, yeah. and I know it's a lot of like new. Not new age, and nowadays a lot of people love self help books. Yeah. Because my self help help book to me is the Bible, and I'm not even trying yeah. to be super Christian, but it's just like yeah. if I need help or help, I like I Christian self help books. Yeah, I don't even like those because yeah. I'm trying because you. Cause my thing is why I realized with Christian self help 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 books, mm-hmm. you tell me stuff that's already in the Bible. Yeah. So why don't I just and they go like to breaking source? it down? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there are some books like there's a book oh, I forget his name. He's a pastor. Um, it's not Mark, self- Mark Batterson. Mm, not that oh, one. Okay. He's an older man. Oh. He um he has a book, but he has a book on all the di- all the strong great people in the Bible. Esther, Paul. It's not a um. self help help book, but they he go through the story, but then you could see and he put in scripture, but how mm-hmm. you can what you can learn from them. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. What they were teaching. Yeah. Like what did Esther do? What can you learn from a, her as a believer, as a yeah. woman? Paul, as a disciple, as a evangelist, what can you learn from? So I like those kind of books, mm-hmm. but those help help, help books are so you know like on different like topics. Yeah, it's boring to me because me personally, I like I need a story. Oh, okay, you know what I'm saying I'm okay. a I'm a story. I don't say I'm a storyteller. I like telling stories. I hear stories. I need a story. Yeah. You gotta keep me like how to make it. Yeah, yeah. It's just you know one of my favorite series is Chronicles of Narnia. Fun fact. Oh, if mm-hmm. you didn't know, that's actually Christian. It's about all about Jesus. Really? It's by C- it's by C.S. Lewis. A lot of people didn't oh, realize I didn't that. Know that. Okay. Chronicles of Narnia is literally about Jesus sacrificing himself for us, and God being so loving oh. that He's forgiving. And how it's a lot of people don't realize. I didn't that. realize that. No. So that's my favorite series. I learned a lot about even t- yo. I'm gonna tell you, I used to read that book. And I used to be so overwhelmed by the love of God. I used to put the book down and praise and worship. Chronicles of Narnia. Wow. I kid you not. How old were you when you started reading that uh, book? Just a couple years ago. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah. me and Demi got married in 2018. So I'll probably say 20, yeah, 2018, 2019. Just, just a couple years ago. Oh, not wow. too long ago. Yeah, yeah. So, but that helped me in my walk. That helped me about the importance of being a oh. baby always you know how God always could come as a child? Yeah. Always being like a child, right? Mm-hmm. Keeping your innocence in terms of like, always come to God like not, I know it all, but God helped me. Right. That book taught me that. And it was not mm-hmm. a self-help book, but it helped me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, all to say that, yeah, in terms of writing, everybody got their own style. Like, right. no, you I'm love self-help, I don't like self-help. So, yeah. if your teacher like a certain type of style and you write, the style that she likes, of course, you're gonna get a great grade. But right, right. you write in the style that I hate, I shouldn't give you a bad grade because I don't like that style. That yeah, that's unfair. That's unfair too. It is. Yeah. So I think that's that's where it comes from, like me being overly critical about my writing. Mm. Yeah, it comes from like educational wounds. 
<laughs> educational loans. You gotta do better. <laughs> and I think, honestly, I think the education system is kind of like, no, not I think. It is broken, point blank, period. Right? Yeah. I remember I was just talking to my principal about this. The fact that America tests so much is ridiculous. And I get it. They test because they make yeah. money off of it. Granted, life is going to give you a test every, every other day. Yeah, but sure. not everybody's a great test taker. Yeah, I'm not a great test taker. Yeah. I, I can be a great test taker, but yeah. don't ask me after a test what I learned. Well, I don't yeah. know. I just memorize. You, to cram, go to, you cram the information in. <laughs> yes. I upload and download <laughs> right, and walk that's out. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all I do. You get what I'm saying? And like, somebody could look at my test. I'm, it's not for everything. Some things I just know. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not a bad test taker. I'll say that. But if it's a subject I don't care about, I'm literally just going to memorize, go take a test, pass yeah. and come back, and I'm done. You yeah. know, so the fact that we test every single time yeah, multiple times like like it's just it's ridiculous and yeah. not everybody set out to do testing the way we do testing other countries yeah. don't always do that really like okay. back in ghana i don't know if they change it but i know they're in the caribbean i don't know if they change it either where kids let's say in high school now we test take a test every they don't do mm-hmm. that mm. well they do ghana, they, you would take a big test at the end of your high school Years. Oh really? Yes, you oh, be like wow. two tests or whatever. Case, how many from however many that's tests? True. You just yeah. go through your high school and mm-hmm. take, and then that time. Listen, I don't know if it changed in Ghana, but that time everybody's studying because it's your one or your two so, big tests you have to yeah. take. It's like everything you learned in high school. You get what that's I'm saying? Good, yeah. But once again, they make money off these tests, so every year they test. Yeah. Them. And every and children learn differently. Like me, like I. I'm a visual learner, but I also have to do it to, for it to, it. yeah, kinesthetic. I have to, yeah. to experience it to, for it to like seep mm-hmm. and stick. When you on the, when you read and read and read in, it doesn't like I no. could grasp some of it, but not the full. I'm like, huh? Yeah. What? Like I think, yeah. especially in, and the way everybody's. Br- so I was watching this video on Instagram mm-hmm. where these. Three dudes. I think it was a podcast. I don't listen to podcasts, by the way, but sometimes I get clips because mm-hmm. I feel like everybody's talking, but whatever. Um, <laughs> this guy, these guys were talking about math, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they were talking about how, because this new math that y'all doing nowadays, what's good with y'all? Like, I don't what even, is all of this? I'm happy to not be a teacher because I don't know yeah, But you got kids. You got to teach them. They got to do old school math. Yo, four plus four is like... <laughs> old school math. It's okay. eight. What are we doing sentences and all this other crap for? It's, it's too eight. Much. It's too yeah. much. Right? Mm-hmm. I shouldn't be writing an essay in math class. That's crazy. Anywho. I, I hated word problems. Why? In math, word problems. I'd be like, but wait, what? I used to get confused. I'm like, wait, but if Sarah said, <laughs> <laughs> said she had 10 and then she went to the store and gave them five, why is it not five? <laughs> What's left is five, and it's like, no, you missed the sentence. What about? I'm like, oh my god, you know, what? I realized <laughs> word problem. Even in school, I realized word problem problems. It is an issue. A lot of kids struggle with it because they don't understand what is being asked. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I feel like those who write these questions need to take English, because sometimes they make it too so, complicated. Yeah, too complicated. Because I gotta get finished getting my license, right? I took my math test, yo. And I studied the way I grew up doing math. Yeah. This is the equation. I solve right. it. Don't do that anymore. So I went with confidence. Like, boom, I got this. Mm, 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 mm. Math confidence, right? First question. Mm, okay. Skip. Second question. Okay. Skip. Third question. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Fourth was- question. I'm reading it, but yeah. I don't understand what you're asking me. Because I'm looking problem. for equations to yeah, just solve. Like, what is it? Yeah. So I'm just like, and I kept going. I'm at test question. I'm just like, so my body language went from like, to like, what the? What? What's that? Like, I know this is. is this? I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. So I couldn't literally. No, I'm not even trying to embarrass myself, but I mean, I'm going to keep it about. I did not know a single question on that test because I don't even know. What well, they're, they're asking yeah. me to say, okay, crazy. this is where I start to end. I don't know what you're asking me. I'm like, yeah. what are you people saying? Like, how can I make a equation from what you're telling me? Right. Like, what do you, I'm like, y'all need yeah. English. Cause I don't know what you're saying. So yeah. I literally used English and contest clues. Praise God for you being an English teacher. <laughs> you got me close, but not close enough. Okay. But I was just like, I'm a whole adult. Yeah. 
But the problem is you're a mess as a dude. And I, what do we, can we, I feel like humans, we have a tendency it's to overcomplicate things. And it's over too much. Yeah, it's like you have to like prove that you're a genius over something really simple. And everybody learns yeah. differently. Some yeah. people can mistake. I think how schooling should be, it's all testing. Some people may be great with testing, great. Yeah. I feel like some people need to be project based. Can I study? I like to let, let me, me touch it. Great. Yeah. Instead of me doing a test, let me actually do a project at yeah. the end of the year. Yeah. And judge me off of that because that's That'd how be I great. Learn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't just always be testing. That's do we? Because like in life, are you going to really unless you take taking tests to get past a bar or get a certain type yeah. of license? Yeah. In your regular job, you're not doing testing. Yeah. So it's like, why are we doing this? Why? Are we, and I feel like education is so overcomplicated. That education teaching is the oldest job on. Mm. That they keep changing. Think about it. The, when God created yeah. Adam, mm. He showed Adam, "This is yeah. yours. This is what you just like mm. teaching is teaching. old. It's yeah. an old profession. There is nothing new. If I feel like okay. other countries have figured it out, but we are always trying to figure out new ways to do it. Like just teach. Yeah, but not everyone is called to be a teacher. That part because child. That part. <laughs> Some teachers do be teaching. It's a it's a calling, it's a skill. You know what it is? <laughs> I've realized that some people. So it's one thing I realized, mm -hmm. they could have the skill of breaking down information mm -hmm. for one to understand, mm -hmm. but they don't have the people skill. Yeah, and that's yeah. not just in teaching. That's in being a nurse. That's in yeah. That's a lot. You of have professions, yeah. some people who. Great doctors, yeah, but they're missing the people skills, and so it's just like those two mm -hmm. go hand in hand, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. you can't just say, Oh, I'm great at explaining things, yeah. But you like, I had a microbiologist teacher when I was in college, mm -hmm. he's good at his job in terms of breaking the stuff down, but he was so boring mm. and monotone. Needed, oh, yeah, those are the worst classes. I felt that, and I didn't feel I kind of seen that class barely passed, yeah, not because I didn't know the, the information would have been interesting, he didn't make he it had some enjoyable. personality, yeah. I'm yeah. Like, what are we talking about here? You have to, especially with children, oh, you yeah. have to make it relatable. That part. So it's digestible for them, you know? And you, like, I think that a lot of teachers, and, and I mean, any profession, they don't, they don't know their demographic. Yeah. And so it's like, they know they're going into schools to teach elementary, but they haven't took the time to know like okay elementary school this is what this is what they're the stage, right this is their doing. right and so you come in with your old school or what you learned in grad school and like this like bl black and white way of teaching it's not the same <laughs> and it's and then you in a rule week and then when you went Yo. to those classrooms and you see those kids they're like because kids are honest oh they'll brutal. tell you like miss brutal. you suck <laughs> <laughs> Miss, no, stop teaching, Miss. They are, <laughs> yo, but I love it. They are brutal, okay? They, yeah, they don't play. Yo. <laughs> the stories you be telling me, I'm like, oh, boy. That's why I don't think, that's why God said, Ariana, I'm not putting you in front of no class. Because, no, not for me. <laughs> yo, you know the crazy thing? Mm -mm. Listen, I've told this before. Growing up, when I was younger, early 20s, when they used to ask me, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? And one thing, I will never answer what I want to do because I did not know. But what I always say is, one thing I know I don't want to do is be a teacher. Verbatim. Wow. And, look and my sentence will be, the next sentence the God follow is up so will be. funny, of course. He because would do I'm it. not trying to go to jail. I'll probably be in jail the first week of work. And, and how I long have you been doing it? I'm on my day. And you haven't been in jail yet. <laughs> not, don't put Praise that yet God. behind it. Praise God. No, she's not going. Yeah. Listen. But because, <laughs> yo, because it's not even the kids that's the issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, the kids, is, they are an issue. The kids are. Because academically, they are so far behind, which yeah. is so sad. Yeah. We have a problem, y'all. Cat yeah, Williams sad. said it. We touched on it. And other people have touched on it. But them kids don't know how to read. And it's. It's yeah. not just New York. Sad. All over. Kids do, know not, do not know how to read. Mm. Granted. Uh, COVID has something to do with it, but yeah. it's just like, and I feel like when I was in school, I, I mean, I mean, I was a student, so I don't know. Yeah. But I feel like just based off a question and answering, the teachers will have us do. I feel like I, 
probably eighty five percent of our class was on standard. Yeah, I think. And yeah. Like 20, 20 or oh, fifteen was like the ones where it's like, oh, they need extra. Right, right. I feel like it has flipped. Fifty percent know what's going it's on. Really, yeah, it's really sad. And the rest yeah. don't know what the heck is. I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. You know, I don't know if parents. Well, we have parents that need to be parents, or just posted this not too long ago. Yeah. We're still trying to be best friends with your kids. Yeah. You can't be best friends with your child and also yeah. be your parent. Yeah, that's true. But it's so, I think when it comes to parents, it's like, I feel like majority of parents want the best for their children. Mm -hmm. However, they don't have the skill on how to teach their child. Because teaching, when you, like, when, like, we were talking about grad school, we went to school to learn these professions. When you become a parent, those nine months, you're cramming books about what to expect. You're yeah. watching videos. Yeah. But when your child is in front of your face, most of the time, you're like, all that goes out the window. Are you winging it, winging it in that moment? Yeah. And so I have, like, for me, because I do men, um, mental health counseling with early childhood, mm -hmm. majority of my parents, they they want their child to be happy, healthy, yeah. like functioning like regular mm -hmm. people in the, on this earth. But it's like they get so scared when they see that their child has, you know, behavioral issues in mm -hmm. school or they have trauma history mm -hmm. and then they have neurodiversity, you know, they neurodivergence. So mm -hmm. they might have autism. They might have, you know, global developmental delay. They mm -hmm. have, you know, different things going on. And so it's like, they're like, I don't know how to teach my child this skill. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to help my child, but I don't know. I don't have the skill. That, it never was modeled to me. Yeah. And so we're literally starting from ground zero mm -hmm. on how to help them train and teach their child basic so skills, cool. you know? Um, yeah. And I think that's the missing, that's like the missing aspect. Even me, I'm like, I'm a parent now and we're called to train our child the way they should go but for you to train you have to have the patience and you have to have the consistency yeah. right right consistency to train like you have to have those skills in order to let it translate to your child yeah. in their age appropriate way yeah. and it's like you know a lot of it is we just don't know this is why following Christ is so important yeah. granted everybody have the choice to do whatever you want to do but mm -hmm. you could even live a peaceful life that is guided yeah. with help right. from God or you could do it alone and struggle That's true. but like real talk the Bible literally shows you how to parent yeah. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. I'll give you an example a couple like a month or two ago I'll probably say I got comfortable giving Zion pops mm -hmm. right because he would do something. I'm like, Zion, stop. Mm -hmm. Zion, stop. Now, I caught myself getting too comfortable hitting yeah. him. And God told Damon, my husband, like, you know, y'all can't be hitting him like that. He's a baby. Mm -hmm. He's a yeah. baby. He's yeah. learning. Everything's right, right. new to him. Yeah. And now, I don't hit him because, like, I just want to pop my kid. But sometimes right. he would do something that's dangerous. He would do it's something like out of like reaction. Reaction. Like, I would yeah. hit him. Stop doing that. You know, it would be so, stuff like it'll be that. Yeah. And God was basically showing us that you can't pop him. For, he's not saying don't pop your kid, don't mm -hmm. discipline your child. But he said you cannot. You don't need to use that use way that. to it's discipline. The, right. right. Mm -hmm. You know. And I was just like, oh, and I felt so bad. Yeah. So I'm apologizing. Like, yeah, he's one. Yeah. He don't know anything. But you be thinking he was very surprised. Yeah, I, I grabbed him. I'm, I'm like, I'm so sorry, mommy. Yeah. I'm sorry, she don't mean to hit you. Da, da. She yeah. just gets scared out of the reaction. That, and Zion goes, Aww. like, he understood mm -hmm. what I said. Yeah. Because like, so smart. Right? Yeah. And he's just like, it's okay. And you're yeah. smiling and laughing. And, yeah. you know, and I haven't hit him since. But it's just like, when those hap those moments happen, so I have to try to catch myself. Like, yeah. He's fine. Mm -hmm. He's fine. Mm -hmm. He's fine. You don't need to hit him out of um, fear. Fear, right? Yeah. Um, but... I wouldn't have gotten that message the way mm -hmm. I've got, I got it if I wasn't. If you weren't in a but yeah, that's okay. true. You have to have a relationship. And then with you that. have to see, mm -hmm. like, okay, when we make mistakes, is God taking his heavenly hands and smacking us across his face? No. No. Is and he, he could, but he, he doesn't. Could, no, please don't. He, he could, but say, he does. The grace, but... the mercy is praise God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right, right. But like, God, don't just yeah. 
pop us or right. don't disqualify us or yeah, don't exile us out of his family yeah. when we make mistakes. Yeah. So it's like those lessons and those uh, uh, um, guides guide, yeah. of how to parent is literally in the book that some people refuse to read. Yeah. You and also through our relationship, like when you have a relationship with God, mm -hmm. you're able to pull from that experience. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's important to have the relationship aspect because a lot of people know scripture, but they don't know the meaning. No. You know, and because we have these lived experiences of God, we're able to, like, it hits differently for us. Right. Like I said, we read books about, like, when your child is five, they should be doing this. When your child is three, you know, you can read the book mm -hmm. and you can have awareness, okay, this is the developmental milestones. Mm -hmm. But you might not have the understanding of how to right. teach that child while they're in that, in that, developmental stage mm -hmm. right because you're supposed to teach them these skills but if you don't you can have the awareness but not the understanding of right. it and so the understanding once you have it then you're able to be like okay but they have they have a short attention span so i need i want my child to learn how to put their toy into the toy box mm -hmm. and so instead of being like put the toy into the toy box and you show them one time you have to consistently show them in steps how to put it in the toy box and without getting upset if right. they do it wrong. You're you new know? to this world. Everything's exactly. new. Exactly. And so I think the the yeah, you need God, period, right. with anything that he calls you to do right. and take care of. But also you need to be teachable. Yeah. And remain teachable right. because that's the way you're able to train your right. child, yeah. you know, yeah. with the skills that they need to learn. I think the, even the teachable part, in order for you to remain teachable, you have to be humble. So mm, that's understand. true. Yeah. Pride gotta go out the door. And pride, I'm, my yeah. mom, my coworkers yeah. always laughing, always come at me and say, oh my gosh, everything's pride, pride, pride. But it's listen, true. pride is very sneaky and very powerful. Very. I mean, you got saying kicked out and have it before saying even existed, if that makes sense. Right, right, yeah. So in order for you to be teachable, you have to also understand and humble yourself to the yeah. point that no, I don't you know. You don't much. know everything. You don't, you don't know everything. Even if you had ten kids, yeah, every kid is different. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's true. So me, I'm not yeah. afraid to ask questions. Like, yo, listen, I don't know if you experienced yeah. this, but yeah. you know, sometimes it's like, especially it being your first child, and you know all these different mental illnesses going yeah, around. You get yeah. nervous about of every course. little thing. Is this yeah. normal? Are they supposed to be doing this? Right. What about that? What about that? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you get nervous. It's your first child, and you just like, okay, you want to, you don't want to mess them up. You don't like, you're just right. so anxious about it. Right. Yeah. You know, but you have to be able to, you have to be yeah. humble enough to say, I need help, right. or I don't understand, or yeah. I'm doing this, it's not working. What are you doing? Is it what, working for right, you? Right. And I think see, we have these conversations all the time. Yeah, because what works for Zai not not work for Joe, but yeah. at least you can try it and see, see. You know, pray for God to bless you with the right yes. community because not every community is Baby. the run for you because you yeah. can be in a toxic community and you're like, why do I feel drained every right. time I talk to you guys? You. Yeah, like it's more so discouragement than encouragement. Right. Um, so you, you want a community that is honest, with, that have a relationship with God, but like you feel that you can be yourself. Right. You know, because sometimes right. you feel like you have to put a mask on. You have to be the perfect parent. You have to be the perfect everything, you know, and it's just like, no. I think that's not for that. We all have an audience. So it's like you have to be honest about your experience, mm -hmm. but it, it shouldn't be like condemning other people if they have a different opinion or a different way of raising their child. Yeah, because, you know, the adverse, um, the, the, the thing that that could also do is, and now, because yeah. I've, he I've heard people, my, some coworkers and yeah. say this to me like yeah if that's not your situation yeah you're like i never went through that like people like people ask <laughs> yeah. me all the time like oh no the f to be honest yeah it could have been hard to be it's really not that hard for us because we have support yeah but i me i'm not about that. to see it yeah i'm I mean, like this is so hard and then you you have like different type of support uh, right. so we have different experiences you know what I'm but i'm not yeah. about to sit like oh parents yeah. just no and my Zion is chill. He's a chill baby. It's a blessed girl. Okay? The oh, only you guys have a <laughs> chill baby. And I <laughs> pray all the all of them are like that. My friend Walter said that yeah. she thought house was chill until she had the other one. That was a that was just a uh -oh. let me just ease you in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? But yeah. it's like 
I'm not for views. I'm not about to sit here in front like, mm-hmm. oh, life is so... Yeah, because sometimes when I want to sleep into 9, 10 o'clock, yes. Yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah. But that's not the yeah. situation. But I feel like there's, there's, a, there's some slight little... It's almost like I have to document every part of my motherhood. Mm-hmm. And I feel... And, I'm, and, and it's so... Dumb. I'm like, you know, motherhood has been both, happening way yeah. before you got here. Mm-hmm. And people mm-hmm. made, made it work. But then the thing that that might do to those... Like was struggling. Them. It will discourage them from yeah. becoming parents because yeah. you make it sound so difficult. If it is difficult, yes, be honest yeah. and talk about and it. Then, and um, talk there about are there are difficult moments. Always, of course, yeah. always, and yeah. talk about it. Like the first two, three months. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. The first year. <laughs> For me. <laughs> yeah. When homeboy yeah. was waking up every two. Listen to math. They wake up every two hours. Mm-hmm. If you're breastfeeding, you want to keep breastfeeding. Yeah. So after you finish feeding them, you have to pump. Yeah. And that takes about a good, what, 30 minutes, you say? Yeah, 30 each breast. Each, so so now, yeah. they've been sleeping for an hour. You've been up one hour after they slept. Yep. So now, never it's, it's now you have to go back to sleep, right? Because mm-hmm. if you don't pump, you're going to lose. Your, your milk will stop flowing. Supply will go low. Right. Yeah. So now, you go to sleep. Guess what? One hour later... You're up doing the same thing again. So you're literally oh probably in the night. Yeah, you, you get have to get up. Of, yeah. <laughs> oh half of what, you know, you can't really go out to chill with your friend for yeah, that, that long. Because yeah. your, your boo's about to explode, so you have to mm-hmm. come back really home. Really uncomfortable. You know, mm-hmm. so when we used to go, I'm like, all right, I gotta go. Gotta home, go. Yeah, we're like, up, oh, it's about that time. So it is, it is a lot. Yeah. Um, I think the, the issue is that they don't show both. Right. They just, they the just, glory right. And the yeah, you parts. have to show yeah. every, like, if you're going to put yourself out there, to be honest, you have to show it all. It's like when people show their relationships and then they disappear and you're like, but what happened? Right. What? And like, you get mad because you're right. asking what happened. What right. happened? Right. It's <laughs> like if you're going to show the good, the bad parts, also show the good. Right. And if you're not comfortable yeah. showing the bad part, just be honest and right and don't have yeah. to, and don't, if, if that's the case, don't show everything. Yeah. Yeah. Be selective about... You need discernment anyways on what you share with the with millions of people that are watching. That are watching. Because not everybody <laughs> is wishing the best for you. Right. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, that's that's my thing. When it comes to kids, mm-hmm. there are, like... It's a curve. And even you, mm-hmm. doing what you do for a living, mm-hmm. it's still a curve for you. Oh, of course. And <laughs> I think it... And it has changed. Mm-hmm. Like, in any profession, you go from, like different seasons where you're like okay I think I'm getting it mm-hmm. I think I'm I'm like I'm grasping the skills necessary to help my clients mm-hmm. and then you have moments where you're like no I don't think I know what I'm doing mm-hmm. <laughs> like I don't know why God called me to this profession mm-hmm. this is too triggering this is too, this is not what I wanted for my life mm-hmm. you know and it's just like yeah that's not what you wanted for your life but mm-hmm. God has a plan way before you even thought about mm-hmm. what you thought you was going to be doing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, some people are blessed enough to know their calling right mm-hmm. away. But like for me, it was a journey to, to know what my skills were mm-hmm. and to know like what my, what my gifts were, mm-hmm. you know, especially like I was undecided in undergrad until I was a be junior. I picked, yeah, I picked a, a major my junior year only because my academic counselor was like, you know, you need to pick something or else you're going to stay here. <laughs> you know, like, you, do you want to graduate or do you, you want to stay? No, I picked, um, I picked sociology. That makes sense. And so, and we went about that because all my credits would, would went to that. Mm-hmm. So she was like, if you pick this. All your all the credits will go to that, and you'll be able to graduate on time. So I was like, okay, cool, sounds good, because I was taking all the ology classes. I was anthropology, sociology, biology, all, yeah, everything. I was trying to find what my every. I was like trying to find what I liked. I'm like, do I like this? Do I like that? Do it like I literally tried everything, and so I was like, all right, I know I like to work with people, and I like to learn about people, mm-hmm. and I'm good with people. So that just stuck with me. Um, and then after I graduated, like most people, life hits you and you're like, oh, I can't find a job. <laughs> you know, okay. you know, you're like, oh, so the allergies it's don't need to, right. It don't lead to a career like off the back. Like you actually no. have to do more work. So it's like, yep. I did community work for a year. I did city year. 
um, and that's working in um, like low income community yeah. as a te as assistant teacher. Wait, that's what? when I knew I wasn't meant for that. I did not know this. Yeah, I'm learning yeah. so much about her. I did assist assistant teaching for a year, and it was hard. And I was like, whoa. She hated it. I was like, this is, ooh, this is not for me, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, not only are you just coming out of undergrad, but you, you know, you want to work. You have friends who are in their careers because of the, yeah, you know, and you feel Don't so, compare. yeah, like, ooh, that was a rough year yeah. like because you don't get paid to do I mean you get stipends yeah, for city year yeah. and it's like it's not a lot of money yeah so you're just like making little money you're in something I that you know that you're not really comfortable and mm. I did not feel comfortable being assistant teacher mm. but I'm here because you did it for a year and I did it for a year because that's the commitment you have to do it for a year to get a scholarship oh. and so I did it to get the scholarship to pay down some of the student debt and so I stuck it out for a year, and I was like, okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. Like, what am I gonna do next? I was like praying, praying, and then I, so a little backstory. Um, for undergrad, I wrote a paper mm -hmm. about like why I wanted to go to college. Now mm -hmm. I'm gonna get emotional, I don't know why. Anyways. <laughs> so, like in my paper, I'm like, you know, um, like I'll be like first generation college student mm -hmm. and um, like you know my experiences with homelessness and mm -hmm. so I went back to that paper and I was like you know like you don't realize how much you went through yeah. you know mm -hmm. um, and I was like I know I love people and I'm really good with other like I mm -hmm. work well with people like I don't know it's like a gift people just yeah, like me yeah. and, well you are very nice and very, I'm very yeah, friendly yeah. and like you know so I'm like I love very people and so guy was just like mental health and I was like mental health I don't know like why mental health but then I did research and it was like um homelessness mental health impacts the like the biggest population of people that are homeless oh. and that connected to me I was like oh my god I was homeless like mm -hmm. I then I, I remember living around people mm -hmm. who did have mental illnesses mm -hmm. and I was like wow okay so let me learn about this because mm -hmm. I actually had this experience mm -hmm. and so I'm thinking I'm going to work with adults mm -hmm. because I'm like, I had the experience as a assistant teacher and I'm not like that. So, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to work know. with adults. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't, I, I did not take any classes that were catered or to kids. to kids. I was like, just adults. And so I graduated out of grad school and then I'm like looking for a job, looking for a job. And then the first job that comes my way is working with children. And I'm like, oh, well. This is not the demographic I wanted <laughs> to work with, but it'll just be for a short while. Yeah, you know, that's your words. Never. You short. know, I need to get my hours, my expert, my um, build hours, and this will help. So let me just take it, and then we're going on five years <laughs> of, of me being at this job and me fighting with God, like Lord, this is too hard. This is too hard. This is too mm -hmm. hard. Um, but then it's like when I look at my my life, mm -hmm. I know why it's, why it's hard. You know, it's because I can literally see myself in these children, you yeah. know, and I had to do a lot. Like, I'm still in a place where I'm starting to, like, surrender and get out of my way of being fearful yeah. um, because it's, like, super triggering. Yeah. It's, like, I literally, you hear about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. I never experienced that, but, like, you, like, you hear about domestic violence, foster care, homelessness just really sad things for these yeah. children to experience yeah. and i wasn't exactly their age because we we um serve one to eight mm -hmm. when we were when i experienced homelessness i was around like 10 11 mm -hmm. and 12. Middle school, that's different. yeah you know and i was like old enough to know mm -hmm. that things were changing but mm -hmm. no like i didn't know why they were changing mm -hmm. and i think i and that's how i can relate to these kids like mm -hmm. their life is getting ripped up from under them and yeah. they're just like on for this yeah. ride that they don't know but they don't know why no one explains to them like why i don't see my dad anymore or like why my mom's not my caregiver anymore yeah. or like you know like why these things are happening yeah. and it's tough yeah you know and so um where i come in is like we do play therapy with yeah. children because you know that's how they communicate mm -hmm. through play and it just it just 
it's healing for them to have a space where they can just be, be, be and release and like play with their play the toys however they want to play with them and like you know learn skills too because they're learning how to communicate their feelings mm -hmm. verbally and not through just like anger and aggression right you know and we always say like the emotions aren't bad. Even in the Bible, it says, be angry, but do not sin. It's the right. sin part. It's like, I want you to be angry. If you feel anger, be angry. Yeah, because, But yeah. channel it. Like Jesus right. was angry. But channel, like, it, channel a different it in way. a different way where yeah. you're not harming yourself and other people. And so it's like learning skills, how to cope with changes. And that's hard when you're little, when you're like, my even adults can't do this. What do you expect their child to uh, do? And the parents are like, I want my child, like, I. The parents are going through a lot themselves. Yeah. The population that we work with, yeah. they going through DV and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so they have a lot of inner work they got to do and burden and just like, they just can't meet the need of their child because they're so overwhelmed yeah. with their situation that they're yeah. in. And so you're, con you're like holding both people, the child and the parent, and you're mm -hmm. helping to bring them together in a way where she, the, the parent can learn how to read the child's needs and meet them and understand like, okay, I'm just, I know that you want this behavior to stop, but you have to be patient. Yeah. It's not overnight, right. it takes time, and you have to do your work yeah. so that you're modeling the right behavior, yeah. you know, which is hard to yeah. do. And then the child has to feel safe, you know, yeah. um, and understood and, it's, it's not gonna be verbal. They're not gonna, not every child can come up to you be like, I'm angry because you took my toy. Yeah. I'm angry. Like, you know, they show it through their actions because um, they communicate through behavior. So it's like trying to help that the parent understand, don't take it personal. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I saw something on online where it was like, parents get triggered because their child is modeling their own behavior. And so your child's talking back and sucking their teeth and Hello, throwing talk stuff about it. and doing all but types that's what of you stuff. Do. And it's like it's like you being reflected. It's like yourself being reflected back at you. Mm -hmm. And so you're constantly you're like, don't do that, yeah. you know. And it's like, well, that's yeah. the environment they're in. That's all true because sometimes yeah. we have pain because I work in low income um, neighborhood and the, first of all, these kids go through so much. Mm -hmm. And I would say like these kids live. Like they've been here for fifty years, right? The things that they go through, you might never experience yeah. this crap in your life ever, you know. Yeah. And it, you, you just have to have sympathy and empathy for them because it's like, yeah. and it breaks your heart because he just went. And yeah. I remember one kid told me once, it was my first year teaching, going through so much with the mother and yeah. boyfriends and all that stuff, and she stroked. She ever told me she's like, I just want to be a kid. She don't, she's tired of taking care of her siblings. Yeah. She just wants to be a kid. And if, I'm just like, wow, you know? And so that's that. And also, I've had kids curse up a storm, behave a certain, and when you meet the parent, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but then yeah. on top of that, there's a reason why God wanted to be a man and a woman, uh, a husband and a wife in the home, yeah. a two parent home for a reason. Because yeah. a lot of these mothers are frustrated and overwhelmed because they are doing it alone. Did y'all yeah. know that? Yeah. When you look at the Bible, actually the man is supposed to be the one raising the children. Because mm. he's the head of the household. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's supposed to be raising the children. Not the woman, but it has flipped. I'm yeah. saying it's good, right? It flipped he flipped it. it. So yeah. now when you look at a lot of the households, who's taking care of the kids? The yeah. woman. Yeah. The yeah. mom is taking care of the kids. And she's tired, right? Yeah. She's overwhelmed. Yeah. Yet she can't do what a father could do neither yeah. a father can do what a mother could do yeah. as much as we say i'm your mom and your dad that's cute but you're not yeah. you get what i'm saying you cannot be both because you're not both yeah. i know like for instance we have infants yeah. right now it's the stage where they on cuddle it all on mom yeah it will come to my friend um jen said this too uh and thank you for that it will come to a point or a season in your life where your time is on mm -hmm. your time is up now it's their turn to pick up the baton yeah, and do his part. all about that. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Because that's when they're training and because that's the next man in the family. So yeah. you are going to follow what the, the man, you know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. The example that's been set oh, before you. Yeah. So it's like, when parents, parent, you cannot get mad when your kids behave a certain way and it's, that's how you do it. Yeah. And it's usually the parent is the issue. It's, Yo. Well, nine <laughs> times out of ten, it's the parents that are the issue. Teachers say that. 
even I'm saying it. It's just like it's you, sis. Yeah. It, so it's like you have to get to the parent in order to heal the child, mm, that's and good. that's the work that we mm -hmm. do in counseling because it's like, and which is why I'm no longer fighting with <laughs> we just did, what two weeks in the year. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer fighting with God two weeks in the year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like submitting to what he has called me to do and at this point. You just gotta give it up. Yeah, I gave, I gave up. I'm like, all right, Lord, if this is what you have me doing, I'm not gonna fight with you. I'm gonna just. But you know, the funny thing, sometimes we can ask God for healing, God. and He puts. I remember I saw this. You ask God for wisdom. You ask God for strength. You ask God yeah. for peace. He will put you in positions. He don't just give yeah. it to you like it's candy. No, you have to actually in order for you to gain it, mm -hmm. you have to be in position. So oh, if you ask God for healing. He is going to put you in a situation where you are going to heal. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But sometimes we, we treat God mm -hmm. like he's a genie. No, I need you to just click with the wand and be yeah. gone. No, 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 no. And I remember Chandler Moore said this when I was doing his makeup a couple years ago. He was like, nothing's ever wasted with God. Mm -hmm. Not an Amen. experience, not a situation, yeah. not, none of that. Yeah. Right? So this situation yeah. can be or is an answer to a prayer you said years ago. Mm -hmm. God, heal me, heal me, heal me. I am. Through this. Yeah, through the work, yeah. It doesn't feel good. No. It's painful, yes. Yeah. But this is where you're going to get healing. And yeah. you mentioned something about the parent got to do the work. Yeah. Just because, and it's all a choice. Yeah. You can come from a bad situation, a bad home, mm -hmm. bad parents and all that stuff, generation, whatever. Yeah. But you have to make that choice to do better. Yeah, it because is. It, I don't even want to hear the excuses. It is your choice. You get what yeah. I'm saying? My mother didn't have... His her father and mother wasn't the greatest. Mm -hmm. My mother is the one of the best mothers, hands yeah, down. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. She's yeah. the best. Yeah. Helpful. She's not even just help me. Help yeah. my friends. Help anybody. She's, that can, she yeah. was literally take you under your wing. She's her wing. Amazing. As yeah. your yeah. child. Her child. Because she knew what it feels like to not have... A supportive parent right or she knew what it feels mm -hmm. like to really have to do it on your own yeah. so and she have a soft part spot for kids yeah. but and so she mm -hmm. don't ever want to see a, another child whether if you're 30 40 mm -hmm. the fact that you're somebody else's child she don't want you to see you suffering suffering because yeah. she know how it feels like yeah. but that was a choice she had to make unfortunately some parents don't make those choices That's and I feel, I feel like yeah. our parents generation mm -hmm. there is a lot of parents because there's a lot of people that i know that grew up without the mother and father being the family yeah. in their life or broken households, yeah. Parents being jealous of their yeah. kids. Like I knew yeah. I know this one girl with parents dead just jealous of her and everything that she and, and mm. it makes no sense to me. Mm. Right? Yeah. And then now we have our generation that of not parents because we got that or got beaten by our parents for no freaking reason. Because yeah. nobody ever asked questions. Right. They just beat us. They do the opposite. They don't discipline the kids now. Right. They just, oh, we have, we best friends, whatever you want. And now the kids they are They lean different. into, like, permissive parenting. Right. Yeah. And I feel like humans, we need to understand balance. Right. Yeah. There needs to be a balance. They need, you need, the children need discipline. They do. And they want discipline because that's how they feel safe. So oh, it's like, never thought about it if like you, if they can't depend on you, then it's, so attachment there, you know, like yeah. attachment. Mm -hmm. Like, if you have a parent who is like, Go ahead, do whatever you want. I don't care. Like, are gives in easily mm -hmm. without like even trying to help them get on a straight and narrow. They feel they take on the ownership of I have to make decisions on my own. I have to it's like do you don't this. Care. Right. It's like you're adultifying your child right. by not showing them how to do X, Y, and Z. Are teaching them our discipline. Discipline is a protective factor for children. And there's a way to do know? it. It doesn't have to be oh you have a corporate punishment. No, oh my it god. It doesn't have to be. It does not listen. Yeah. Cause I'll give them one story. My father, right? Mm -hmm. Great father, great man. Uh, but it was at some point in time where he didn't really know how to discipline. It was just oh, yeah. his form of discipline, being super African, I'm going to hit you, I'm going to hit you, I'm going to hit you. And they got to a yeah. point, I didn't have respect for him because I'm like, yeah. you don't know how to raise me. All you know is how to hit me. Right. And the one that I actually, I actually used to be scared of was my mother. My mother, I think in my life, my mother hit me once. Yeah. And when she did hit me, she was confused as to why she did. I was confused with her. Like, <laughs> like what why you I do that? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But when my mother raised the voice of like, like you know you what? Know. I'm done. With, I was scared to death. Yeah. Also, I was more fear for the person who didn't hit me than the one that hit, hit me. me. Yeah. Because now, because you hit me so much, I'm a chant. Well, I was that kid. I'm a challenge you because mm -hmm. you're playing with me. Because you're playing. Right. right. And that's a lot of kids. But it's also like how some churches teach us about God through the fear factor, right? Mm -hmm. So now you feel like, 
I'm gonna go to hell if I do this. I'm gonna go to hell if I do that. Right. And it's but the admiration and the respect isn't there yeah. through, through teaching through fear. Yeah. What you want, you, you know, your child, your child doesn't have to fear you, but when they respect you, right, they want to do the right thing. Right, they want to like please you. They want to disappoint. It's more about yeah. disappointment than fear. Yeah. You no, know, you. The child don't want to disappoint your parents. Exactly. Especially when you have that connection right. and you know that this is this person keeps me safe. Yeah. This person truly loves me. Lo truly loves me. Like how we feel about God. Yeah. It's like I don't want to disappoint God because I know how He loves, loves me. me. Yeah. You know, and that's how parents should try to raise their children. children. You know, because like. I grew up similar. My mom was very militant and very like, you do something wrong, you're getting a spanking with a wet belt. Okay. Oh, I never got the wet belt. <laughs> the wet stuff. belt. Okay. It was, and you would have to wet it yourself, kind of like how people take sticks okay, so and you wet, you, where <laughs> you have to wet the belt yourself and give it to her and she'll beat you. And you couldn't flinch. You couldn't, me, I always got the worst beatings because I used yeah, to no. run. Oh, you. <laughs> I, <laughs> I used to run. And I had, I, my mouth would be like, are you done yet? <laughs> and she would be like, what? <laughs> My sister was like, don't ask any questions. Oh my Just God. take the beating. And I would be like, no, I can't take the beating. I used to run all over the, the house. house. I bet. Just to not get the beating, but then I would get it anyways. And it'll be <laughs> worse. Um, but it's like I grew up with fear. Like, oh my God, if I don't do this, I'm gonna get spanked. Yeah. You know? And it like we get confused. A lot of parents feel like, well, I ended up good, so my parents' way of parenting wasn't that bad. Yeah. Just because you ended up good doesn't mean that trauma is not existing. Right. Doesn't mean that everything your parents did was the right way of doing it. And you know that by going back to those moments when you got the beatings, when you mm -hmm. felt unheard, when you felt like, oh, they, no one cares about my feelings. Mm -hmm. When you go back to those moments, you're like, okay. That didn't feel good. Yeah. And I don't want my child to feel that way. Yeah. So let me work on that. Let me let me work on the inner wounds that I got from those moments so that I can learn and transfer that. It, it and not do it to my own child. Mm -hmm. You know? But even to touch on what you said about the teaching of fear of God, I grew up learning about fear of God, fear of God, fear of God. Yeah. And I would say this once again, balance, right? Yeah. And my church or African church I grew up in, it was always about God is your God. He is mm -hmm. this, he is that. So it was a lot of fear of God, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to do nothing. To, like if I was texting in church while I pray, I thought God was going to set my phone on fire. <laughs> right. like, yeah. that, that's how much fear I got. So I would yeah. say like, either they teach too much lying, yep. mm -hmm. the lying, or they, mm -hmm. too, they teach too much the lamb. Because mm -hmm. then I go to a different church now, mm -hmm. and I was a lot of the lamb of God, the lamb of God, the God is love. But then people take advantage of that where Oh yeah, that's true. They do wrong, and it's like, yeah. bro, are you serious? Don't you fear God? A human beings. But because you've been given, oh God yeah. is so loving, He's so forgiving. Yeah. It's like yeah. we need to find a balance. a balance. We can't teach too that's much true. of God is going to strike you dead, strike you dead with <laughs> iron and brimstone mm -hmm. that you are so afraid to go to Him for anything. Right. And then we can't do too much of like the lamb. Oh God is so loving, He's so forgiving. So even when you know that you're doing wrong, you still do it. Right. He's still gonna forgive you because right. He's no, 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 no. Don't play God now. Mm -hmm. It needs to be a balance. Yeah. God is love. He is the lion and the lamb right. together. together yeah. He is going to, He is going to correct you right. and discipline you in a loving way. way. Right. Okay. It's the loving way. That part. That way. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we need to take. A couple Bell. of pages out of his book, mm -hmm. okay, and kind of do our parents in the way he does it. Yeah, it's not just you could do whatever you want to do and no. not have the consequences. These kids, yeah. 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 Just, these kids don't know the difference. No, we grown up, we said, no, um, that's a, no child's play. This is an adult. Yeah. Remember you hear yeah. that? These these yeah. kids don't know that. They don't know yeah. the difference between an adult and a child. So the way they will talk to their so peers now. is yeah. the way they talk to us. Yeah. I had a kid throw a paper on my table like, I need help. I said, Oh, he got me twisted. Yeah. I said, you don't have to figure it out on yourself. These kids. But I said, no, 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 we're not doing the that. the parents. You know, uh, but I spoke yeah. to a parent. Just like, yeah, that's how she, I'm like, well, yeah. you need to check it. Yeah. And I feel scared for them because it's going to be hard to live and to yeah. live in the world where you are allergic to discipline or yep. correction. <laughs> and that's where, and you, I, I was studying for my license exam. And I was, I thought it was so fascinating that the personality disorders, like borderline, narcissist, mm -hmm. narcissistic, 
narcissism, like that all is rooted in childhood and mm -hmm. how you are raised. Mm -hmm. And so if you do too much of like, you're perfect. There's nothing wrong with you. You can do whatever you want. Then you like, you're literally Narcissist. molding your child to feel like they're like the queen or the king of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a parent that's inconsistent and in and out of their life and, and, and don't really discipline them, then you have like these like borderline where they're like, okay women yeah you know it's like it really is like it's mm. crazy it's like rooted in the way that you are raised yeah. in the patterns yeah if that foundation get rocked and ruined it literally affects, affects everything, everything after That's true. okay yeah. so imagine uh uh, uh yeah. if, if you're planting a tree or you're planting a, uh, an apple mm -hmm. if that found it's a little wrong, uh, wrong in that foundation yeah. and there's a little um uh bacteria does not yeah. go, it is going to grow yeah but you're not going to get what you're looking what you're for. for yeah so we also that's a, because your foundation determines everything yeah same thing with our relationship yeah. with god if we don't have a strong that's what he said make sure your foundation is firm if mm -hmm. you don't have a strong foundation with christ mm -hmm. COVID hit church is closed now i know yeah. i have a relationship with god now why is that because your foundation was never yeah. firm it was based on church. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So all to say, like, your foundation is so important. And right. a lot of times, whenever some of my traumas will come out or I would do something, I'm like, why did you do that? I literally go back to my childhood. Mm -hmm. I said, well, mm -hmm. you did. And, like, the brain will quit. Mm -hmm. Them synapses be synapping, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just yeah. like, oh, why did this? I just okay. got angry. Did, well, this person said this word, and that reminded me of this Not, situation. Yeah, right. And it goes, oh, the, I said, mm -hmm. oh, that's where that came from. Okay, now now we know the root of the, of yeah. the issue. Let's work Let's on work it. Let's work on it, yep. And so. that's, like, when I first found out I was pregnant, mm -hmm. I, I was like, oh, okay, back to therapy I go. Because <laughs> I was like, I know there are things, there are a lot of things. Yeah. I'm still working through the, these yeah. things. There are a lot of things that I've experienced as a child that I knew that I didn't want to put on to mm -hmm. my kids. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to start working on them. Now I feel even more motivated mm -hmm. to get myself together. together. You're never going to be perfect. You're no. never going to be 100%. But it's like at least you are aware, self-aware yeah. of the places where God is still like, okay, Rihanna, we got to work on this, I, um, you know? And so I knew that. And I was like, oh, back to therapy. Mm -hmm. And it did help. Like, especially I was pregnant and I was going to my sessions mm -hmm. and we're talking about all Everything. types of stuff. And yeah. I'm just like, wow, this is deep. <laughs> yeah. But it's like at least... I started the work. I think my therapy started before I even had had him got pregnant. I said, God, yeah. I want a girl first because you know yeah. I just need a girlfriend. I need to you feel me? Yeah. But God knows you and he knew that my request for a girl first came out came from fear. Not because I really wanted a girl first. Mm -hmm. So when I tell you <laughs> it's oh you have no boy. I said, oh, what? I said, all them times I've been praying, you haven't been <laughs> listening to me? Damon knew but me. Yeah. He was like, Yeah, I knew I was like, I didn't that's all I asked for. Yeah. But he did it for a reason because he knows that there are things I have to work on mm -hmm. and he cannot feed my fear. Gotcha. Yeah. You have to show yeah, me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That, oh, no, no, no. I'm going to give you a boyfriend. I'm going to show you a different mm -hmm. type of love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, yeah. That's deep. That was deep. That's a good way to end it, though. I think, yeah. like, we're all a work in progress. You need Jesus. Like, Jesus is, that that, Jesus is how we're able to be good parents, be good at our jobs. Like he, that is our main and primary calling is a relationship with Christ. Yep. So if you I don't got a relationship to 2024, you better get one. You, be <laughs> <laughs> you better, better get one. Better so get one. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. I hope yeah. you guys took something from this. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're not a believer, I get it. I hope your time comes. If you're never going to, you've made up in your mind that you're never going to follow him. I pray um, for you and, you know. It's not a, yeah. It's I, a tough way to live. It's a tough way to live. There's peace on this side, mm -hmm. okay? And it's free. I'm mm -hmm. telling you. Because uh, I lived on the other side for a while. And, yo, yeah, when I it's... became a freaking whiner, wino because I had no peace and I couldn't it's sleep crazy. at night. Yeah. I had to drink wine. Literally, I had to budget for wine. Yeah. To point I got I kinda got addicted to wine. Yeah. I had to drink yeah. wine to go to sleep because I had no peace. Yeah. 
there's peace on the side. So you, I hope that, go ahead. Yeah, it's pe even through the trials and tribulations, it's just knowing that you are not alone. Yeah, you got support. You know, you have support. Your Heavenly Father knows you. He knows the plan for you. And he doesn't want us out here just winging it. Like he gave us a book of instructions for a reason. Right, and, he, and I will say this. He created this life. Mm -hmm. He had the guidelines of how to live this life. Yeah. It will make sense to live with, with the person, the one who created this whole thing. Yep. That's like you creating a whole robot and somebody take it with no instruction. It's like, I'm going right. to figure it out. And right. you're struggling. But right. you could actually go to the person who knows? that created the robot, the ends, the outs, and right. they could show you how who this robot you. operates. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. He knows you. You are the mm -hmm. robot, I guess. Right. The... He knows us in, it, in and out. Yeah. Right. And he can yeah. tell you, I know I know you more than you know you know yourself. Yep. He because sure does. I know you before you, you was in your mother's womb. He knows yeah. you. He knows yeah. every fabric of you. So yeah. he knows every motion, every charm, everything. He knows it. Right. So if you don't have him, go talk to Jesus. If you don't believe him, but you know, God, you know what? I heard about you, but show up. Yeah. That's how mother got got to Christ. She yeah. believe. She said, her testimony is crazy. Oh, I want to hear she, it. Yeah. <laughs> she, but you know, if you don't, you really, you aren't sure, God, ask God, ask Jesus to show up. Yeah. Just ask him to show up and... He's going to do just that. Mm -hmm. As long as you believe, though. As right. long as you genuinely want to know him. It's not mockery, but it's like genuinely in your heart. Mm -hmm. You really want to know him. Okay? Yeah. So, that's all I have to say. Yeah, no. I think this was a great conversation. Um, yeah. Thank you for the food. It was yeah. amazing. I'm going to finish my... I'm a slow eater. I'm going to finish my food eater. after. But um, <laughs> it was delicious, okay? Thank she throws you. down in the kitchen. So Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Wait. She'll be here more often, okay? Oh, I am? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation was good. It was really, yeah. really good. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoy and yeah. have a blessed one, okay? Bye. Bye.